and welcome to our program, Health, Wellbeing and Lifestyle, where we educate and inspire on various topics around healthy living and quality lifestyle. Now today for our first guest, we have Mark Carazzo, who's a business consultant and coach. And this is a series of positive psychology. And today the topic is relationships. Welcome, Mark. Welcome, Linda. How important are relationships to our well-being? Oh, they're critical, Linda. In fact, it's impossible to overstate the importance of relationships. Uh, there's some suggestion out there that if you have somebody that you can ring at 3am in the morning to tell your problems to, you're probably going to live longer than somebody who doesn't. Uh, we also have some Harvard research saying that people with the strongest social support groups are the happiest. So the need for strong interpersonal connections is very deep in all of us and people that have that generally have better well-being and a happier life. And how can we improve our relationships? Well, I think the first thing to do uh, is to express kindness to people is a great way to not only get more relationships but to improve the ones we have. It sounds fairly obvious but, but there's good, uh, good proof out there that that does help and not only does it make that person receiving it feel good, there's evidence suggesting that it makes our ourselves feel even better so that. Express gratitude to people for what they do and the roles they play in our lives. We uh, too often overlook that and I think just if we can, being a happy and optimistic person tends to endear ourselves to people. We, we know that uh, people are more likely to want to be around us when our mood is high than, uh, than when it's not. And would you have any advice on how we can improve in that regard, in the area of relationships? Well, in our own personal, intimate relationships, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Firstly, spend more time with your partner. We all live very busy lives and we don't get that time together as much as we should. There again, express gratitude, simple moments throughout the day where you can say thank you for doing that for me. Uh, that really helps and of course you're more likely to get that in return. Be uh, very positive in your language. There has been some uh, studies done which suggests that you should use positive language. The ratio that has been suggested is for every one negative you may say to your, to your closest that you should say three positive things without sounding not authentic about it. So they're my tips about personal relationships, Linda. What about low moments in our lives, Mark? Yes, those real low ebbs in our life uh, where we're going through extreme trauma or distress. I sort of go back to a, a long-held saying that a problem shared is a problem halved, and that's, that seems to be borne out by the scientific proof that we have. We know that cancer sufferers, for instance, uh, are more likely to have reduced anxiety and better prospects of recovery if they're part of a support group. And of course, when you are at those low moments, there's very practical advice that your relationships can provide you. It might be somebody to, to take you to hospital or somebody to find some valuable information for you. So just in any stage of your life, but particularly in those low ebbs, relationships are critical. Very true. And what, it, and, and, and what about in the, then in the workplace? How does it play? How would good relationships play out there? Well, we spend so much of our time at the workplace, don't we? And so much of our relationships and friendships are sort of born out of time at work. Yes, uh, so important that we have a, a workplace where people socialise and they've proven that that adds to a better performing and more highly energetic team when people socialise. And from the point of view of the, of the managers and leaders, I think it's really important that they express praise to their staff and spend time understanding the particular uh, personalities that they deal with every day. It really helps. Mm -hmm. And would there, be, would there be any other um, tips that you could give our viewers apart from all of the, that you've shared so far? Well, I did say expressing gratitude for relationships. It's going to be a word you're going to hear a lot in the positive psychology series because it's just so important. So. I'd, I'd reiterate that. And the other thing I think is very important in relationships is to be open and be authentic. I think we, we all have an antenna for people that aren't being that way and uh, I think they're my sort of two, two closing tips for people. And Mark, would you have any more tips for our viewers? I think I'd like to leave them with a point I've already said before. It's, it's so important to express gratitude uh, to our friends and to our connections for the many, many things they do for us on a daily basis. And it's so easy to overlook those things, even the things that we might think are routine. That to me is very important. Also connected is to express praise for things 
that are done well. Everybody likes to hear that as well as they love to hear the word thanks. I think we also need to be aware that uh, we, in a sense, have a bit of a social duty in our friendships and connections. And that comes from a principle that we know called social contagion, which basically directs that our mood tends to follow the mood of the person expressing the highest or strongest emotion, either positive or negative. So if we come into a room and we're very happy, then it's likely that the people we're with will also become happy. If the alternative is true and we come into a room uh, not in a very good mood, on a bit of a downer, that's going to relate to other people and they're therefore going to share that with others in their day. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So uh, I accept that there are points of, of our lives when we are very down, but there are also occasions where we, we might be able to get through our day without expressing them to others and, and making sure we stay uh, really in an upbeat mood. Thank you, Mark. And for more about keeping an upbeat mood in relationships, and Positive Psychology and Mark Carazzo, then please go to our website healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And now we'll go to break and after the break we'll be back with two of our viewers' requests. Uh, that's Nancy Beckhaw talking about psychedelics and mind expansion and Sandra Kalik talking about authentic confidence. <music> Welcome back and welcome back Nancy Beckhaw who's here to talk to us today about psychedelics and mind expansion. Welcome Nancy. Hello. Well, what's this big interest in psychedelics? World Health Organization has said in 2017 that uh, psychedelic medicine is the greatest, most powerful new field of medicine because people are getting well from things they were never meant to be able to get well with. Now. To speak about this, we need to just go over what I spoke about last time about meditation. Meditation is to calm, uh, make inner peace. It is especially to connect with the inner self, the knowing self, and ultimately leading to your sense of purpose and resolving conflicts that you may have because guess who knows best about you is you. So as we move on to what I call advanced meditation is kind of what psychedelics are, except that most of the population um, accesses that by swallowing plant medicine or plant of herbs, basically herbs. And uh, why do they do it? So mind expansion gets us to answer questions like, why does someone get over a terminal illness and somebody doesn't? Why is somebody luckier than somebody else? My background is physics and chem chemistry. And I will say to you, there are so many unexplained mysteries in the world. Where does the new technology come from? Where does great art come from? It's said that we only use 3% of our brain power. So people are wanting to access this. Um, but, you know, ingesting herbs is not for everybody. So, yeah, that's interesting. What about in, uh, I've noticed some, in nature there are these unexplained things scientists don't have any explanation for, like water disappearing into nowhere. Yes, there's, uh, I find it a very exciting time. Um, physics is almost being turned on its head. They, they actually say that the physics of consciousness, which is where mind expansion goes, are different laws. And that's where you can get mysterious things happening. Um, you know, you follow coincidences, the kind of coincidences that can occur to a person who's tuned in, high level meditation, the, um, the kind of things that can happen blow your mind, but you don't hear about it on the news. People don't know what to do with these extraordinary happenings and uh, so nothing is said about it, but the time has come for us to make use of all of our powers. So I'd like to tell you there is a much easier way, which is light technology, which I had spoken about in regards to meditation. But light technology is a much simpler event where you go have a 30 minute session and then you leave uh, fully functional and you begin to integrate what you experienced of the maybe the colors, the patterns, 
and again the mind steps aside and we get genius. This is from whence genius comes. Let's stop doing the same things the same way all the time. So people have traveled everywhere around the world. People are traveling. I mean, soon there's going to be shuttles out in space. But what about the cosmic inner world, the great uncharted territory? It's extremely exciting because it will affect your actual life. Well, thank you, Nancy. And for more information on Nancy and psychedelics and light technology and meditation, then please go to our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And we'll go to break now. And after the break, we'll be back with Sondre Kallick, who will be here to talk to us about another topic in health, well-being and lifestyle. Welcome back, and now we have Sondre Kallick with us again, our Women's Sales Success Coach. And next, she's talking about authentic confidence. Yeah. Tell us more about that, Sondre. Well, what a wonderful topic. I know, isn't it? Because I think there is a lot of people who actually think they're confident, but what they're doing is they're really coming from a place of, what does confidence look like? Like, what should it look like? What should it sound like? What should it feel like? And then they're really projecting that out as opposed to having a confidence that comes from the internal well of, you know, the solidness of who you are and what you, and the values that you take out into the world, right? Um, when I started out in sales, of course, I was an actual introvert, believe it or not. I was extremely shy and I actually found it extremely hard, like heart palpitatingly hard to talk to people and to, you know, especially actually ask them for money in exchange for the product that I was selling. So it was, a, it was a very interesting opportunity because I was taught that confidence was something that was projected out. It was about a firm handshake and that smile that I had to have plastered on my face all of the time, you know, and it was a really hard habit to break actually. But, you know, and shoulder pads, you know, in my suit and having, you know, having the confident walk, there was all about, how I looked, how I was perceived. And so, but what happens, have you ever sort of felt that when somebody really projects their confidence onto you, what do you do? Back off. Back off, mm -hmm. exactly. And so, you know, there's a lot of instances where people are having that encounter. They, they're like, what am I doing wrong? You know, like everything should be working, yet people aren't connecting with me. And they're not able to connect because there is this this pushing away when we're actually trying to invite people in. And that really has to do with our energetic field, which is a lot of, um, you know, it's an easy concept to understand and it's an easy thing to change in how you be, okay? Because simply it's like your energetic field goes about an arm's to an arm's length apart from, you know, your physical body. And so everything that we think and everything that we feel um, our belief systems, our value systems, basically hold space <laughs> and generate a certain feeling for other people when they encounter us. And so if we're pushing outwards, we're not actually able to invite inwards. And confidence really needs to be something that's fostered within us. It's part of our own ownership of the value of who we are, our ideas, our experience, our... Um, our creative ways in which we do things, the unique perspective that we bring to whatever it is that we're doing is of value to other people. And yet we are often kind of pushing these ideas out beyond our energetic field. And so the idea is to allow enough space for to be able to invite people in. And that really is, that does come down to your confidence. It comes down to your confidence in your value, in your ideas, in your experience and finding a way in which you can uh, gain confidence in those is all about the clarity. You know, if you have real clarity around what it is that you're speaking about, if you are able to take people through a succinct um, step of, or steps of steps, you know, a succinct uh, system, then people are really able to go, oh, okay, so that's how it works. And therefore, the confidence in the, what you're talking about radiates the confidence. Oh, and Sandra, that's so important for people to take into life, isn't it? For all of us to yeah. have that awareness. Absolutely, because, 
you know, confidence, like we're talking about it in a sales sense, yes, we need that. But we need that for any idea it is that we're trying to get other people to participate with us in. Because really, you know, we're always selling something. And we want to do that so that it's of service to other people and also serves us as well. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Sondre. And for more uh, information about confidence and Sondre, then please go to our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And now we'll go to break. And after the break, we'll be back with Con Nichols. And he's here with the first in his series about improving your environment to meet your lifestyle and more specifically today, insurance and utilities. Welcome back and next we have Con Nichols, who's a property advisor and wellbeing advocate. And today Con's here with the first in a series about improving your environment to meet your lifestyle. And Con's here today to talk to us about utilities and insurance. So welcome, Con. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the show. What sort of, aid, what sort of grouping, actually, are you referring to? Look, like we all said before, like, you know, your mum and dad, you now they've got the kids moved out, uh, the parents moved on. So now they got a massive property down there that literally they hardly use most of it. So, and of course it brings up a new can of worms with a lot of things that actually will affect their lifestyle as well. And the biggest thing obviously we can think of, obviously your energy. Remember something, the bigger the property you have, the more it's gonna cost you to warm it up or to cool it down. And the bigger the property is, the more insurance you're gonna pay, and the more outgoings in the sense that you gotta maintain the cost. Example is, if you move down to a smaller property and you got a, a 40 square home and you move into a 20 square home, literally half the size, your energy will be less, your gas will be less, definitely your insurance will be less because you won't be insuring your property in a bigger amount because it'll be smaller and as we all know that insurance work on reconstruction value of what you're going to insure for and so on so all these little things that add up to a bigger pot for you for later on the years it will be more economically benefit for you later on and in addition to that as well um having a bigger house you're going to actually find more appliances and you're gonna find more furnitures, and you're gonna find more things that actually you gotta buy things that you don't need anymore. So in this case here, smaller is better. Also Linda as well is that, um, for example, you got a bigger house, which has a bigger yard. Technically, you gotta maintain your garden, right? So that means you waste more water. And having all these water restrictions lately, obviously it's gonna be a bigger cost to you as well. And so you're saving on the water, you're saving on the gas, you're saving on the energy, you're saving on, on, on things that actually on insurances, on your policies, on the contents. Because a smaller property, you're going to insure less amount of contents than a bigger house. So if you look at the mining you're saving, when it comes down to your freedom to utilize your, 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 your nest, as we say, in a bigger, in a bigger way, You've got better funds, you've got more funds to use. And we all know these days here, every little dollar counts. So then with the energy, would that, would that include things like, um, I suppose it includes loads of things, like that even if you've got air conditioning or heating or all of those things? Definitely, I mean, can you imagine now, let's say in this case here, we've got a mum and dad moved into a two bedroom unit or a townhouse and your living area it's more restricted, more smaller, but more comfortable. So that area of space, it takes a lot more less to cool down than your big rumpus room and your family room and so on. So technically, you're saving money. And, and yes, it might be smaller, but it's more comfortable as well. You don't have to use your energy as often. Uh, and, and there are all these little things that a lot of people are getting the benefit of you can utilize for later on in your life. 
And Con, I know for, for our viewers, it might be very helpful to have a bit of advice about contents insurance. Oh, look, I mean, a lot of people get mixed up about, look, we've got building insurance now, we need content insurance. What is a content insurance? Now, when you've got a property, for example, and um, the floor coverings, it's not a building insurance, it's a content insurance. And a lot of people get mixed up, well, hold on, but is that part of the, the building? Well, no. And you've got to be very, very careful, you, is that um, when you speak to your advisor, professional advisor, when it comes to insurance, you got to brace him in what you cover and not covered. Another topic I want to discuss when it comes to downsizing with insurance there is, for example, if you live in a building block and you downsize into a smaller property, you still get the benefits of having a beautiful and warm place and so on. However, you don't pay the excess of the vulnerability, you don't pay the excess of the surrounds insurance and minors because they work on sizing. So the bigger your apartment is or, or your, your space, you pay more. The smaller it is, you pay less, of course. And at the end of the day, it's better for you guys. The more you're saving, it goes towards your lifestyle later on. And at the end of the day, it's all about living healthy and living happy. That's great. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that. And um, we'll say bye-bye to Con till next time for now. And for more about Con Nichols and improving your environment to meet your lifestyle, then please go to his webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And we'll, we'll say bye-bye for now and we'll see you next week back with more amazing interviews with people in health, wellbeing and lifestyle.